just casually dropping a hatchery in the middle of your wall off. Not to worry, that's cause it's Bly. An aggressive, creative zerg, Bly is known as the player that goes his own way, counterplaying his opponent with unorthodox strategies on the highest stages of StarCraft competition. But just how much of that is improvised? Well, let's find out as we discover how to just play like Bly. I am glad to have my next guest, Bly, here on my show. Bly, how would you describe yourself as a player? Hello, everybody. And that's interesting question. Yeah. I guess uh, freestyling, aggressiveness, special builds, just something that makes me enjoy a game more. And I think a lot of people would agree that you do a lot of special builds. I love that element of special builds. Um, you used to play Warcraft 3 before StarCraft 2. Yeah. And I know what that means as a Warcraft 3 player, but how would you describe the transition from Warcraft 3 to StarCraft 2 in terms mm. of playstyle difference? In terms of playstyle, it's actually quite hard. It's really hard because uh, Warcraft 3 takes a lot of micro and uh, army movements and stuff, more than uh, making units and uh, getting eco. While in StarCraft 2, you don't micro often. You have to, you have the same aspect as moving around the map, in the right time, in the right place, and feel how the game goes. But macro is way more important than micro in this game most of the time. And uh, it's, it was hard for me to switch because uh, at the start of the game, I was playing like a ton of games and uh, I couldn't get good results because uh, I keep focusing on micro because I'm used to uh, instead of uh, making units and uh, just a click. Do you feel like Starcraft punishes you for focusing on micro? Sometimes, yeah, actually. Like, if it's not like late, late, late game where you have to like 200, 200 supply and you remake the army after the fight is done. Yeah. So, coming into Starcraft with that Warcraft 3 background, like, how do you keep some of those Warcraft 3 elements in your Starcraft 2 play? Mm, I mean, I like to micro and I'm overdoing it still after like 10 years of Starcraft 2. I'm still over microing a ton and uh, Missing my macro injects, the script spread, the uh, unit production all the time. That's really tough, actually, uh, to be a high quality pro programmer and uh, keep making the same mistakes because you do what you like. With your being hyper aggressive, is that something that you take from Warcraft 3 to be hyper aggressive? Or do you, just in Starcraft 2, do you think like, hyper aggressive is just something a natural player can lean to? It's not because of Warcraft 3, actually, hyper yeah. aggressiveness. I just, uh, when I start to start to play, like, when you don't know what exactly your opening is doing, if you are space, especially you play in Zerg, you make links, usually, trying to scout with some units and stuff, sometimes do some damage, and since I have good micro, I can get my information, get, get her harassment, and meantime, don't die to all ins. You use, like, proxy hatch, like, a lot. Like over over the years, and so did that. How have you evolved? Because obviously, other players you they play you on the ladder. They've seen your tournaments. They know what, they know kind of what you're going to be doing in the way you're going to be doing off unusual things, and then they're going to try and maybe counter with their own unusual style. How do you prepare for that? It like knowing that they'll probably prepare for you. Usually, I'm doing the builds. Like if I innovate any, any build, I'm playing it for like a year or a year and a half. Then everybody start to study like <laughs> how to beat it they find out usually it takes one year plus they're not very fast at studying usually and uh, i find the new build that works against what they do right now and it works and if they try to blend counter my counter i'm trying to proxy hatch they try to block i see it in this game i lose this game next game i uh, counter they counter they right. counter and you just i mean it's my games it's it's like poker. You just bluff him now. Yeah, so I was, I was thinking that means it, it has to be like, you, you know, you've prepared this strategy, they've studied it, then you are preparing for that counter. You figured out that they're going to counter. Does that, do you do this ahead of time before you go into a tournament? Do you like, pr you know, prepare the counter against a counter against a counter? Or do you kind of make it up as you're, you know, as you're going? Or how do you kind of like keep that in your mind for that? I guess I just improvise most of the time. Uh, I'm not very good at like, doing the same stuff again and again because I get bored and <laughs> I'm just I'm just doing what game sounds like, you know? Yeah. The game sounds like you should all in now. Why not? If map says you can't all in now, 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's StarCraft is a very complicated game, and you have to admit all the small things uh, of uh, how your opponent can defend. If you fake all in, like fake queen pool, and meantime you make mass drones, he's making a ton of shield batteries and stuff. You can, uh, I don't know, make hatchery on the third, third base, and with my image, they will always be scared, like, ah, oh, where is a hatchery? I once read that you had said that it's not always improvisation. Like, it's not 100% improvisation. A lot of the times, it's you've done a lot of analysis on your opponents, and then you look for their weaknesses, and you build sort of your strategies from that. How do you prepare for that? How do you analyze your opponent and then turn that into a strategy? I'm such a person that I like to find mistakes. I'm searching for it all the time. And if I see a mistake and I can punish him for this, I'm always doing it because I like it. And maybe that's my my special things to do, I guess. Because of this, I can make new strategy because I know that most of people go, for example, in ZVP, add a first boost, second add a boost too, and they go across the map. I will always leave four links close to his natural, wait till they go away, and hello. <laughs> so you just try to see a window in every aspect of the game and just use it. Does that mean that you strat do you study a lot of the replays of your opponents or do you just a lot of replays of the race and then you just assume that people are just going to do the same thing over and over again and you exploit? How do you kind of like get that information? I mean, usually you play against most of the top players on ladder. Of course. Against everybody you play on ladder and you play customs and stuff. And you know that this player is better than this, this player is better than this. This player is very good at that, so you should not be doing this. <laughs> it's so complicated, but meantime, you know, big spots and good spots. Right, right, and right. You just try to dodge the bullet, and meantime, shut him. As a Zerg player, do you feel that it is harder to be more creative than to be more... play differently than other players because of how Zerg is? 100%. Uh, like, Protoss have so much tools, uh, Terran have so much tools. Zerg has... The best way to play Zerg is uh, sit back, make drones, and scout. That's the best <laughs> way. And the way I am playing is very different from what everybody else is playing, which is really hard. Zerg doesn't have too much tools. Like, like Blizzard took all the tools from Zerg. I was playing uh, Infesto Ravager when Fungal stopped units. I was playing uh, Nidus when Nidus was way cheaper and mm. faster and stuff. I was playing uh, Berlin Grouch, Ravager, all in, but then they made overcharged battery. Thank you. And so much more stuff for real. Like, uh, I was playing, maybe people can call it, I was playing Imba, but I found the build and it worked versus everybody. I mean, maybe it's Imba or maybe people just didn't know how to defend against it. And then Patch came with some great Innovative, cheap void race, <laughs> fast void race, fast build, building cast void race and stuff. Uh, just the last patch was no, no bueno. <laughs> Do you feel then that Blizzard discourages players from playing creatively? Do you feel like they actively try to curve people from playing creatively in the game? I feel like what they did, like for example, overcharged battery was made for, for PvP. <laughs> but it does. It's never used in you know in P, in PVP. It's usually never used. It's used in PVZ all the time. In PVT all the time. In PVP maybe from time to time. <laughs> so what they're trying to do is uh, to make StarCraft macro like all games should be macro oriented. So they took most of the Harris abilities from Zerg and all in possibilities from Zerg and adds battery or a charge battery. I mean, there was a time when there was Mothership Core flying and turning on pilots. Yeah, that was... <laughs> yeah. I am definitely from the Mothership Core era. I love uh, it, but obviously I can I imagine that super frustrating to have to deal with. I was playing in Dreamhack finals against the Protoss uh, during this era and uh, it, pilot overcharge cost 25 energy during this finals. Three days after, it cost 50. Over time then, you've had to evolve your strategy, especially like the, the proxy hatch. How have you changed your proxy hatch strategy to match the meta to match? Because you still do it now and you've been doing it for a while. Like how have you evolved it a little bit? Well, I was doing it till people who was like 5.7 came and I didn't start to defend it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, something is wrong. I have to change it. And I was trying different ones. You just keep on trying. 
this one and this one, and what if I do hatchery earlier, what if I do later, what if I do uh, third hatching is very natural, and uh, hmm, how does it work now? My favorite one is the one when you did against Protoss. Um, you put it in between, I want to say you, you blocked the, the wall in, and I thought that one was one of my uh, favorite. It still, it still works, yeah. It still works, okay, all right. Yeah, I've seen, I saw it in a recent game, and I was like, I love that one, that was my favorite one. Um, your favorite. You can pull the drones with it. Yeah, I love it. Um, you can pull all the drones, at except three, Okay. and cancel the hatch and go in. I think you even kept the hatch in the game. I'm, I'm trying, I can't remember which game it was. But you yeah. can keep, you can keep the hatch. Yeah. You can cancel the hatch and go with the drones. It's so much about building placement, map overlay, what he does. Does he boost his zella? Does he pull the probes? How much he does? Like it's it's very very different. But uh, since I'm adaptive player and I improvise most of the time, I was just doing it and I was like, hmm. okay, okay, he pulls four probes and zella. Hmm. <laughs> if I don't cancel it, he's not gonna kill it in time, and I'm, I might get a queen, and I kill Gate. Let's see what happens then. And after all, I had like so much practice with it, uh, even though I was doing everything almost perfectly from the start because I just liked it. I think yeah, definitely that's my favorite. One of my favorite things I've ever watched when your plays is that because it just to me it just it was I was like oh my god, <laughs> I think it works. The one thing I wanted to know is that I heard there's a story about one time when your PC broke during a tournament and you had to use a car battery to power your PC. I don't know, is that a true story? <laughs> How did that story go? Could you tell me that story, how that goes? Light went off, uh, just no electricity for like a few hours. What tournament was it? Uh, penthouse party or something like this, from uh, House Rica, from Take TV. Take, Take TV, okay. I even have a tweet, I think, with the battery and stuff. <laughs> uh, I asked to wait, uh, I called my dad to bring the battery, and he brought a battery, and it was actually a very strong one, uh, I think, 2.5 hours of playing, which was very unusual and good. And I was able to finish the tournament with the battery, which is... Uh... I didn't realize you could power a PC up. Like, isn't there a different in terms of current? Like, isn't that like, possible your computer could <laughs> maybe even <laughs> explode from taking power from a car battery? Why? No, if you have adapter and stuff. Oh, adapter. Uh, oh okay. Of, of, I mean, of course, it's right. usually they are not capable of doing it. But if you have adapter, I mean, you have to adapt. <laughs> Well, that's it, right? Do you, do you consider yourself in general a creative, adaptive person? <laughs> Actually, yeah, creative, adaptive. Very, very adaptive. Not maybe as creative as even adaptive, because I'm just improvised. Even with the card battery, I was like, ah, I gotta play. <laughs> and uh, I was trying to find a way. I was like, maybe I should take a PC and go to my uncle. Uh, no, it's too far away. Where can I go? Blah, blah, blah. I even had, like, one time, uh, internet went off. Uh, when I was when I lived in Kiev, my internet went off, and I go to my friend Alex zero zero seven to uh, finish the tournament of uh, Total Biscuit. Earlier days of StarCraft, you played like you practiced like forty hours plus. Uh, do you still do you still practice a lot like that? I always practice. Like even today, I played like six hours before our meeting, and I will play again maybe three four hours after. When you practice, do you practice something anything specifically? Just practice. You know, whatever. Or do you like this is what you're working on today? This is what you're gonna work out. Like, I'm curious to know how structured some of your practice might be. Most of the, of the time, you just practice to get better. Yeah. Getting higher your overall skill, overall level in all matchups. But if you have a tournament that's coming soon, for example, for me it's Dreamhack tomorrow. Yeah. Of course, I was practicing SVP today because I have Drover tomorrow, and uh, I did study him. I did check replays. I did check what I can do, and I did practice what. I could be doing against him. Improvising, but not improvising 100%. That's exactly what I was kind of curious about, is that you will study your opponent and then think of a strategy that will work against their weaknesses. Do you write any of it down? Do you do anything kind of like structured or just in your head? I don't write anything down. Yeah. Either. It just, I mean, I'm stubborn, I hate losing. And uh, when you hate losing, you get emotion every time you're losing. And emotions, you remember emotions way more often than just thoughts. Is there something in your life or things that you've trained or things that situations you've been in that has made you be very adaptive, right? As my wife says, I'm very stubborn. <laughs> stubborn in just your, your just your mentality? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm actually very stubborn usually. So if I, like, even in the games, uh, most people whining about like, you leave so late, you leave the game so late, blah, blah, blah. Why do you waste my time? I'm winning one of these hundred games, but for this one one game, you should stay in the game longer to be sure that, like, 
most of the people whining because I'm staying in the game like 50 supply against one 150 and stuff. But I'm staying in the game if I can imagine the way I can win. Can you tell me it's like a game where that happened, where you stayed in there, where people and the player you thought you were going to lose, and then you stayed and you ended up winning? Did that has that happened? Well, often. Often. It does happen. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember a game against New Thermal. He had like 150 against 90 supply, one one against zero zero, and he was attacking me. Everybody was like, <laughs> "Just get out!" But you stayed. What what tournament was that? Was that a tournament or was that? Uh... It was some body TV tournament, I think. Uh, I just burrow my veins and. I've also heard that you don't you, you don't like losing. You hate losing, and that's something that I think a lot of people hate losing. <laughs> but how do you think your hate of losing is different from other people, or even helps you be just that stubborn? Like it's just stubbornness. If I'm losing and I don't think I should, I'm mad, angry at myself, and I'm like, no way, no. I have to win. No way you're gonna win to lose to, to this guy again. No <laughs> way. He's so bad. No way. He you're gonna lose to him. That's mentality. Maybe it's bad, maybe it's good, but sometimes it helps to practice more. Sometimes it helps to adrenaline your brain and body and get more, more energy to think more forward, two, three, four steps. Is there, a, is there a time where your emotions actually worked against you? All the time, for real. Like every big turn, tournament, I just choke. Even though I'm playing for like 15 years already of professional gaming, yeah. I still, every big tournament, it's hard to come down and uh, just focus. Usually I just tunnel vision. If I don't get nerves, uh, I'm playing very good, like for real, very good. Have you over the years figured out or implemented anything to kind of count, to counter that, to combat that? Like, do you do anything like- I restrain so much things. <laughs> the psychology is meditation, uh, even uh, pills uh, from nerves. Uh, I don't remember how, how, how they're called, but pills from nerves stops your brain from working normally. And uh, meditation helps a bit, but still really hard to come down. Psychologist helped a bit, but still like, I, I, I don't know. I'm just very emotional per person, I guess. Usually if I'm like have more than one, one match at a day and I'm playing the first match and I am like losing all my emotions during the first match because I was right. nervous in so much. The so next matches on the fly, like. And so it feels like sometimes you're in this like battle between the your good emotion, your emotions, how they help you sometimes, and then sometimes how they hold you back. Like you've done some really cool um, matches. Is there a point where you see yourself not having your emotions get in the way, or is this something that you're, not, you know, at this point you're kind of okay with it, and it's just this this balancing act? I mean, I was trying to get rid of it and focus on stuff, and this is the only one way, which was somewhat okay to get them as lower as possible was uh, being maximum confident in myself. Like if you win against some players 100% of the time, you just steamroll them because I don't really care because I'm going to win anyway, you know? But other than that, I'm just used to it. Yeah, I thought so. It sounds like you're just kind of, at this point, you're kind of used to it. So it feels like a lot of times it's going to be what is, like if you're doing well, you're going to keep going off that high. If you're not doing well, you're going to, it's like tilt, right? You're going to maybe tilt and... and... What player, player like maybe counters you the best? Very defensive players. It's really hard to play for me. Uh, for example, Showtime. It's very hard to play against him. He's very good at uh, being just slightly aggressive to scout and stuff. And meantime, he's very, very defensive and uh, stable and very high level. And it's really hard for me to play against him. If you could change anything in StarCraft, this is my favorite question to ask my guests. What would you change? Anything. You had a wand, you can like do anything to the game, what would you change it to do? Just one. Just one thing. Ooh, I want to change so much. <laughs> oh. I'm thinking like, Hydra, both are great at one. Mm, great. Infestor, Fungal stops unit. Perfect. <laughs> but I, I guess I guess Infestor stop units is the best. But maybe bring full armor from Injection is, is a good thing too, I guess. So much. What, was, much. what would be your number? Like, if you could only get one, what would you? Infe inf Infestor stop unit. Yeah. All right. Fungal stop stop units from moving. That was like not uh, slowing. Yeah, that, they used to stop in a long time ago, wasn't it? I can't remember. Or was it always? Wings of Liberty? That Wings, Wings of Liberty. Liberty. Yeah, yes, I was like, I'm pretty. That was a change. I remember that. I think we changed in Heart of the Swarm. If there were players out there who follow your style and they want to, you know, play like Bly, what advice would you give them? Just enjoy your play. If you get bored from playing 
copying standard builds and stuff. Just try to innovate something and just just try to freestyle and enjoy the game. That's the way I'm. I keep my my motivation up uh, because I'm playing different things and I'm try. If I'm bored from something, I'm like, I can't play this game normally. I'm just do. I'm gonna do some random. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see how it goes. And sometimes, oh, that's a good build. Looks like it can win a ton of people, and uh, that's how you find the way to beat better players. All right. So, if you want to, is there anybody you want to give a shout out, or any like players or teams or anything you'd like to give a shout out at the end of this video? Thanks to for everybody who's streaming for me, guys. I am keep playing a ton, keep streaming. Except this uh, two weeks of Dreamhack, I guess, not of a stream, but. I keep streaming on Twitch TV that uh, Fire and uh, YouTube slash Fire. So follow me and check some all-ins. Usually I actually all-in on stream.